Recently, I've seen a lot of people using this effect on their videos, and I was curious because I figured it was a lot of work to actually do. You know, you would have to duplicate the layer, uh, cut the person out, and then put something between the two layers. But that cutting the person out is a lot of work, especially as they're moving around, because as they move around, you know, you have to keep keyframing all of that stuff. But guess what? It's really, really easy. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Without this plugin that I'll show you how to use in a second, the way that I would accomplish this is I would set up a green screen behind me and I would record whatever it is that I was going to record. Uh, then I would take the green screen down, I would get out of the shot, and I would set up my camera to record the exact same position and duration. That way I basically have two shots from the same exact place. I would put the empty shot underneath, and then the shot with me talking about it on a green screen in front of it, and then I would key out the green, uh, anything outside the green screen. The problem with this is my shadows, if they get cast behind me, would they wouldn't be accurate to what was happening on screen, and it kind of makes the effect fall apart. The other thing is I happen to move my hands around a lot when I'm talking, and unless you have an incredibly wide green screen, you are restricted to how far out your hands can get before they go outside that green screen and then your hand just disappears. So how do we do this the simple way? In order to accomplish this, we're gonna be using a plugin called Background Remover and I install it through FX Factory. I'll leave a link down below that you can use in order to do this, but uh, go ahead and install FX Factory and then you're gonna search for uh, the Background Remover. Uh, once you have it and you've purchased it, it'll automatically work in Final Cut Pro, so then you can just close FX Factory and then open up your timeline. Now, here I have the intro that you just watched at the beginning of this video, and I'm going to show you how I made the effect that you saw. So the first thing that I do is I'm going to click on my, you know, my clip, and I'm going to hold down Option and drag that option up above, and I'm going to go ahead and mute it because we don't need to hear the audio twice. We only need to hear it once. And then over here, here on the right hand side, there's a section where we have our effects. And once you've got it installed, it's going to be under your video effects and it'll be called background remover. And I'm going to come up here and just use my background remover. And if I hover over, you can see exactly what it looks like. So I'll just drag that onto the top portion of the video and it looks exactly the same. Here's all I have to do. This is so easy. I'm going to go into um, my titles and stuff up here. I'm going to go and I'm going to use something called uh, Yanobox MoType 2, which is also available via FX Factor Factory. I'll leave links in to all of this stuff down below. And I'm going to pick, we'll go with this one right here, Iridescent. And I'm just going to drag this uh, above me. And you can see the letters. And I'll go ahead and edit the text and I'll say subscribe. And now it says subscribe, but that's not in front of me, that's behind me. So just like any piece of software that uses layers, all I have to do is drag that down underneath that layer. And now it's behind me. I'll drag this over to the left and I'll drag this over to the right. And then as this guy is talking, which I'm going to mute so we don't hear him, uh, you can see that it's behind me, but you can see like my ear is getting messed up just a little bit. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this top layer. Actually, first, I'm going to click on the subscribe and I'm going to use my shift and just drag it straight up a little bit. So it just kind of shows uh, over my head. And then I'm going to click on the clip that I am keying out essentially. And on that clip, if I click over here, I can see my background remover stuff. And they have some really interesting stuff here. So there's a help button, which you can click on. It's going to take you to all kinds of tutorial stuff, which is going to make things way, way easier for you. Uh, we also have uh, some presets that you can choose from. So, you know, I can choose... Uh, to just have it cut me out or I can have it trace me in purple. But I'm going to actually hit uh, Command Z and go back to just having the, the regular thing. Um, my output, I can choose to either output me or 
to output the background, cutting me out from the background, all right, which is really weird looking. I, I, I wouldn't ever use that, but I'm sure that other people can find a way to use it. Um, and then uh, you could turn outlines on and off. You can turn on cropping if you need to. Uh, but let's take a look at the sensitivity. And if we click on the help button, let's see what they say about sensitivity. It says, raise the sensitivity parameter to preserve final de finer details such as hair and fingertips. The parameter works best for human subjects. Decrease the parameter when detecting inanimate, inanimate objects or animals uh, or when it appears noisy. So let's go back to Final Cut Pro and I want to zoom in on my stupid, stupid face. So we'll go up to 100% and you can see that right now it's cutting through my head. So I'm just gonna change the sensitivity just a little bit. And you can see I lowered the sensitivity and now it's, it's doing a little bit better around my head. So I'm gonna hit play. And you can still see that there's some issues, but you gotta remember, nobody's gonna be zoomed in like that on your video. Uh, so I'm just gonna watch it back real quick and see how it looks. It looks pretty good. Now this can be a really easy effect to overuse because number one, it's easy to use. Number two, it looks really cool. Um, but I feel like if you use it too much, it can be distracting. The way that I think that is a really effective way to use it is to use it in the first few seconds of your video. The reason why is as people are scrolling through YouTube on their phones, whatever video happens to be closest to the middle of their phone is going to start playing without any sound. And if it's playing without any sound, how are they going to know what you're saying? Well, you can put text on screen. So a simple and subtle way to either um, build a little bit more curiosity about your title and thumbnail and the first few seconds of your video would be to use that text as a trick. Another way is you could kind of slightly close the curiosity gap. So your title and thumbnail makes them wonder what's going on. And then the first few seconds of the video, you've got an answer to whatever question that they were thinking about. That's going to make them feel satisfied that they click on your video. Uh, the last thing that I would say is it's going to increase the retention in that first 30 seconds, which is a uh, an analytics metric that is incredibly important. How fast do people bounce off of your video? So if you can keep 70% of people who clicked on your video watching it in that first 30 seconds by giving them their eyes something to do, reading something on screen, it's really gonna help boost your video. And if you are curious about other analytics uh, questions, check out this video right here.